the previous lesson, we looked at different shapes that um, different functions can take on. And we just looked at the very basic uh, types of functions. Like we looked at a uh, squared function and drew a parabola. And we looked at an absolute value function and knew it was a, a V. But all of that was pretty much centered about the origin. Um, and today we're going to look at functions that are going to have some transformations, which means we're going to add and subtract and multiply um, to different parts of the function. And to start off with, we just see a, a summary of graphing techniques. And this right now just looks like um, a bunch of stuff that we can't organize in our head. Um, and we're gonna come back to that after we've gone through the lesson and just kind of um, summarize what we, what we see here. But we're gonna start with example one. And um, this is kind of a long lesson, so I uh, went ahead and drew in my graphs um, before starting the lesson because it would just save a little bit of time. All right, but the graphs are very important and you need to make sure that you graph them as well. But if we look here, we have a function that says f of x equals x squared. And we should know that this is a quadratic function. And from our lesson yesterday, we know that this is a U shape. All right, so we started at the, the vertex at the origin, and it was just a U, like this. So this is our parent function. Now, right next to here, we have a graph that says G of X equals X squared plus three. So now we are adding three to our X squared. This indicates that we want to move up three. We want to take the whole U and move it up three. So I start here and I'm going to bring my vertex up three units and then my U, my U is just transferred up three. I'm shifting it up three. In the next function, it says that we have x f of x equals x squared, so we still have a quadratic function. And if I were to draw my u through the origin, it looks just like the one we had before. And this time, it's asking us to subtract four. So from my origin, I'm gonna move down four units. This will be my new origin, and then my graph will still be that U, just shifting down four. Okay, pretty simple here. So anytime we see a function that's adding a number or subtracting a number from that function, we're just shifting it along the y-axis that many units. And to the next page. This time, we start with our parent function, which is still quadratic. So I'm gonna start with a u. And then it tells us to shift two units, but this time my two is in the parentheses. When it was outside the parentheses, it was a vertical shift. This time it's inside the parentheses and this is a horizontal shift. And this is gonna be two units and 
we're looking at the number in the parentheses. The trick here is if it's in the parentheses, we want to move it in the opposite direction. So technically we would look at this and we would see x minus 2 and we would want to move it in the negative direction. But actually what we want to do is move it in the opposite direction. opposite direction of the sign. Okay, so technically here, we're going to take this U, this graph, and we're going to move it three units, or two units, sorry, two units to the right. So this means move right two units. So if my vertex is at the origin, and I'm going to move it right two units, here is my new vertex, and all of those points are just shifted right two units. All right, so right below it, we have another parabola with the function y or f of x equals x squared. So we'll draw our parent function. We always want to start off thinking, what does my parent function look like? And this time I'm shifting horizontally, okay, because it's in the parentheses with x. I'm going the opposite of the sign, so I'm going to go in the negative direction for units. So I'm going to move four units left. So if I start here and count four units to the left, here's my new vertex. And I'm going to graph that parabola as best as I can that matches this. Okay, I'm taking this whole parabola and shifting it four units. I don't have to do it point by point, I can just kind of do it by what, where the vertex is and where it needs to move. In example five, this time, if you notice, I see numbers inside and outside the parentheses. I still have a parent function of f of x equals x squared. This is my parent function. And what that really does is it tells us, okay, my parent function is quadratic, so I'm gonna have a u. Instead of having a u that is centered at the vertex, I'm going to shift this. This time, I'm gonna shift it twice inside the parentheses tells me I need to shift left or right. And in this case, I'm gonna shift left three units. So I'm gonna write that down, left three and down five. Okay, once again, if the sign is, if the number is in the parentheses, we use the opposite of sign. So instead of moving to positive 3, I'm going to negative 3. That's left 3. And this is exactly as I see it. This tells us to move up or down, whatever the number is. It's down because it's negative 5. So if I were to start here and count left 3 units and then down 5 units, here's my new vertex. And my function, or the graph of this function, would be a parabola, and it's shifted left 3, down 5. So this is the graph of the function we have here. Okay, just kind of putting those um, first two shifts together.
So on these last two examples on this page, now we're looking at an absolute value function. And if we remember from our lesson yesterday, our absolute value function needs to make a V. So my parent function, if I start here at the origin, I'm going to have part of my function is a straight line going up to the right. And the other part of my function is going to be reflected over the x axis or the y axis. All right, so if I think of my parent function being just the square root of x is x, I'm kind of thinking in terms of slope here because I'm going to go up 1 over 1. That point is on my graph. Up 1 over 1. So we're thinking of this as having a slope of 1. If I look at the function we're given to graph the g function, now I have 2 times the absolute value of x. So that means I'm going to have a new slope, and my slope is going to be 2. So that means I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Okay, and same thing on the other side. I'm going to go up 2 over 1, or I can think of this as reflecting over the y-axis. So I'm still at the origin for my vertex, and this one is going to kind of be squeezed in. Okay, so in this case, we're not shifting left, right, up, or down, but the 2 in front of the function tells us to get skinnier. Or we're going to squeeze. Or sometimes we call this a vertical stretch. We're stretching it up. It's going up faster than our parent function. And in the last example seven on this page, we still have the absolute value function. So here's my parent function. I'm just kind of using a different color so we can see here. Now my slope is one half. So if I start here, I'm going to go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. So in this side, it's kind of stretching outward, right? And I can reflect these over the y-axis, and it would look something like this. The technical term for this is a vertical compression. A vertical compression. And what that means is it's it's widening, we're compressing it downwards, we're up here, we're stretching it upwards, but if we push down, it's, it's like we're opening a little bit wider. Or it takes longer to get to the same point. Okay, so if I wanted to get to a, 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 a certain Y value, it's gonna take me longer to get there. Ooh, this one looks a little messy. 
So technically, this looks like, to me, it looks like a sine function, just because I know what that looks like. And if you notice here, we just have a um, kind of like a wave. If you ever heard of a sine wave, that's kind of what that looks like. Um, it's going up at a certain point, it's coming back down, it's going back up, and that comes back down. And this is my original function, so this is my parent function. I haven't done anything to it. Um, this is just really y equals sine of x. Well, actually it's not a sine, it's not sine of x. It's, let's just say that this is our function. Over here, it's asking us to multiply the outside of the function, f of x, by 3, which means we're stretching it up. My new slope is 3 units. So if I look over here, it takes me 1 unit to get to the top at this point at pi over 2. If I stretch, it's going to go up three units instead of one. Okay. And then at pi, it will be at the x-axis. And at three pi over two, which is our next x value. On the original function, it was at negative 1, but now we're stretching it to negative 3. And then at 2 pi, it hits the axis again. So what we're looking at now, I'm going to draw it here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go through the x-axis at pi down to negative 3, then I'm going to go back to the x-axis at 2 pi, and then I'm going to go back up here. And really what that did is it just took this function and it stretched it out by a factor of 3. If I look at the next function, notice that my 3 now is in the parentheses with x. This means I'm going to stretch it horizontally. All right. So this was a vertical stretch. And this one is going to be a horizontal stretch. Okay, so if you kind of um, just think I'm going to stretch it horizontally along the x-axis. So if I start with my, my starting point at 0, in the original function, it's going to go up and it's going to hit pi. Um, it's going to come back down and hit pi. But now we're going to multiply by this by 3. So it's actually going to go down and hit pi at 3 pi. So now if I'm just counting by pi, here's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. And then 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. 7, 8, 9 pi. And we're just going to stop there. I'm still only going to go up to one unit vertically and to negative one on the y-axis. So somewhere in between here, I'm going to hit my maximum of one. And then sometime in between here, I'm going to hit my maximum value of negative one or my minimum value. Then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to hit a maximum value of one again and then it's going to come back down. So it would kind of look like this. Okay, and it's just stretched out by a factor of 3. Okay, that was kind of hard to 
do because we're not working with just interior, integer units, we're actually working in terms of pi. But down here, um, we're thinking of functions and now we see some negatives, okay? When I see a negative multiplied to a function, this tells me to flip. The negative means I'm gonna flip. If the negative is outside of the function, like before, I'm going to flip over the y-axis. So negative f x squared means to flip over the y-axis. And if the negative is inside either parentheses or the absolute value sign or the square root, then I'm going to flip over the x-axis. Okay. So if I look at this, my parent function is here. It's a parabola again. And because of this negative, now I want to just flip this downward over the x-axis. If we think about from yesterday's lesson, we have um, a square root function, and we know a square root function starts at zero, and it kind of goes up slowly to the right. <coughs> Excuse me. If it is a number inside the function with x, we're going to flip over the x x, or we're going to flip it over the x-axis, yes. All right, so this means I'm going to I'm sorry, we're going to flip it over the y-axis. This one up here we flipped it over the x-axis. So this tells us to flip up or down. And this tells us to flip left and right. Okay, sorry about that. So this time I'm gonna bring all these points and flip it over the y-axis. So here, if I start at my origin, I'm just gonna draw my function that goes in the opposite direction. Okay, lots of stuff going on with our graphs here. And now we're gonna kind of put all of this together. So we see lots of things happening here to this function. So first of all, if I identify what kind of function it is, this is a rational function. And if we remember from yesterday, our parent function looks like that, 1 over x. And our parent function kind of hugs the axes in the first and the third quadrants. Okay, We have two branches here. So that's just the general shape that a rational function will take. Now, this has some things happening to it. So I am going to rewrite this a little bit. I'm gonna say that this is f of x, and because I have a three here, I'm gonna multiply this by three, and I'm going to have one over x minus two, and then a plus one. Okay, I'm just kind of spreading it out so we can see what's happening here a bit. So this three tells us that I want to stretch it now this would be 
a 2 inside the function with x. So inside the function with x, this is my horizontal shift. And this will tell us to move 2 in the not negative direction, but in the positive direction. So this means I'm going to move right 2. And this part tells us I'm going to move up 1. And this is my vertical shift. All right, so lots of things going on in this function. And it makes it a little bit harder because we're using a rational function that we're not really that familiar with. But if we look at the rational function, if you notice, the branches don't hit the axes. And because of that, we say we have asymptotes. at the x and y axes. Now, if they cross, if the asymptotes are crossing, the asymptote, the intersection of those asymptotes are at the origin. Now here, I'm shifting right two and up one. So I'm just gonna put a point where that is, right two and up one. So this is going to be like our new origin. So I know I have asymptotes that are going through the origin. So instead of having the axes there as guiding points, I'm going to just make these um, imaginary lines, imaginary axes that will serve as our asymptotes that go through the point that we've shifted to. Now the stretch on this is I'm multiplying it by three. So um, it's this is very hard to see on a rational function, but what that means is it's gonna get even tighter towards the origin, right? So it's gonna, um, be closer to where the origin is. So it's going to come very close, but still not hit those asymptotes. And the branch, the branches are always across from each other. If this were a shift, we would have to take this and put it in the second, fourth, and fourth quadrants. If, if this were a reflection, so if I had a negative three, I would put them in the opposite quadrants. But with this positive three, I'm shifting and it looks like that. Okay. It just got tighter. We squeezed it tighter to the origin than we did over here. All right, so again, that was a lot of things happening and um, we have a rational function. Notice I really didn't plot any points except for the one key point um, that will be kind of like our starting point. Here's one more below and if you notice down here I kind of summarized everything and we'll come back to that in a second but um, if I look parent function is the square root function. All right, the square root function looks like this. Starting point at zero, and it goes up slowly to the right. Inside this square root sign, and I'm gonna write this another way. Um, so we can kind of see better. So I'm gonna write the opposite of x first and then a plus one. And then outside of the square root, we have a plus two. The plus one inside the square root tells us to go left or right one unit. Instead of the positive direction, we're gonna go in the negative direction. 
So the one tells us to shift left one and outside of the square root I'm adding two so I'm going to shift up two because it's positive. So that would be my new start starting point left one up two so if I just make my new starting point left one up to here we are and inside the absolute value with x tells us that it's going to go in the opposite direction so the negative inside tell us i'm going to flip directions instead of going up to the right i'm going to go up to the left so I can make my graph just kind of go up like that. So there we have a graph. We didn't have to plot any points and do any calculations. We're just looking at the configuration of the function and noticing that each part represents some kind of movement to the graph. And down below, I want you to write this down, f of x equals a times the function x minus h plus k. Okay. We've used h and k before when we were working with circles. And we know that if I took h and had k, I have the center of a circle. Same thing's going to happen here. H and K is really going to be our starting point. It could be a vertex. It could be where the asymptotes are going to intersect. Um, it could be the point where um, I would start my square root function. But it's going to give me some starting point. H and K represent some starting point. All right, so <clears throat> just kind of looking through this, this A tells me if I'm going to stretch or compress. Okay. If it's negative, it's going to flip up and down. So a negative A is flip down. The H, okay, and the remember this is the opposite sign, is gonna be our horizontal shift. And that will tell us if I'm going to move left or right. And it's going to be the opposite direction of the sign. So if it's minus, it's not going to move in the negative direction. It's going to go the other way. So it's going to move to the right. If it's plus, it's not going to go in the positive direction. It's going to go to the left. And this K right here tells us our vertical shift. So this is going to tell us if it moves up or down. Okay. And it keeps the sign. If it's not in the parentheses, it will keep that sign. So if it's plus, it's gonna move up. If it's negative, it's gonna move down. So just looking back at the very beginning here, or almost done, we have the summary of graphing techniques. And everything I showed you 
if I look at the function, the vertical shifts are adding or subtracting a value outside of the parentheses. Our horizontal shifts are moving left and right if the number is inside of the parentheses. If I am multiplying by a value, it's either stretching it, which means it goes up or down faster, or it compresses if it is a fraction. Okay, so if this number is less than one, it's gonna go down faster, or slower. It's gonna um, squeeze outward. If I multiply a number inside the function here, so if I multiply my a multiplied by x, okay, this is going to be a horizontal stretch. So this is a vertical right here. And this one is horizontal. Oops, right here. And then the negative signs. If I multiply a function by a negative, or this is really multiplying by a negative one, this tells us to flip it down. If it's inside, the negative inside the parentheses, or square root sign, or absolute value sign, or inside the rational um, fraction, then you're going to flip it left, flip it over the origins, or the y-axis. So it's going to go in the left direction rather than the right direction. All right, so that is really all that we have about graphing techniques. Okay, lots of things that can happen to a graph and how they move over the axes.